So yesterday, if you guys have hopped on World War II, you probably know that once again, we got a new event, that being the Blitzkrieg events. And as such, we got a lot of cool stuff. We got weapons, we got new game modes, we got all kinds of stuff like that. And yesterday, we really focused on debuting some of the weapons here on the channel to give you guys a raw look at that kind of stuff. But now that I'm back home, now that I'm back at my desk and able to work on all this kind of stuff, today I wanted to bring you guys the changes because while it is a little bit later than I would initially have hoped for to get this sort of thing up, we are still able to debut these changes for you guys and let you know everything that has changed in World War II as a part of the Blitzkrieg event within the game. So that said, once again, it launched for everybody across the board. It was not something that is only segmented for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or PC. Everybody has this and now has the option to get the five weapons, the Itra Burst, the M2 Carbine, the Type 5, the Type 38, the Sterling, and the Baseball Bat. Some are timed, but we'll talk about that a little bit further. But on top of stuff you don't have to necessarily gamble for, what else has changed? That said, let's jump right into it. So let's immediately go to, once again, the headquarters items and the things in the headquarters. So first and foremost, of course, we do see the standard HQ that we saw as of the DLC update. That actually was something that was given to us early, which is kind of strange. We haven't seen that happen yet in World War II, but it's still that barren, broken down headquarters that we see now for the past week or so. Now, on top of that, if you end up going over to the Quartermaster, once again, kind of focusing on this, getting it out of the way early, one of the first things you might notice is that there are different things thrown in the mix here for collections. When I first jumped on, I immediately thought that all of these things would be immediately in the Blitzkrieg event section, but we end up only seeing four different things here, which might be a timed segmentation of when not only these are released, but maybe we get more down the line in the Blitzkrieg event itself. Like what we saw with Resistance and how we ended up getting a second wave of that at it in because there's only four items at the very moment. But that said, the Itra Burst and the Sterling are a part of that Blitzkrieg, and then we have the Baseball Bats, but also we have a little bit of a uniform there as well. Those are timed for a seven-day lock period, so they don't unlock until next week at this point in time for those specific collection rewards. Now, as for the other ones, once again, that's only half the weapons that we had dropped yesterday. We do have the M2 Carbine, Type 38, and the Type 5. Those are actually found in Op Operation Overlord. So if you guys want to go and unlock those, you can absolutely do that right now. They are a little bit pricey. I will give you that and definitely say that off the bat. So you might want to try and chip away at some supply drops you've had saved up or something like that. So you don't necessarily have to spend that massive amount of armory credits, but you can end up getting all three of those different variants in Operation Overlord immediately. Those are stuff that are right there. And of course, if you do end up going the routes of say opening save supply drops up, you also do run that chance of unlocking it different variant for it, to which case you'll have the option to use it no matter what. Those were added in into the Quartermaster and are now available in the respective classifications of both Operation Overlord and then Blitzkrieg. Personally, once again, I think that Blitzkrieg will have some more stuff added in later on, but that's for time to tell. On top of all that, though, we also did have new camos, new variants, and other new customization options like we've seen before added in also. I'm a huge fan of the Ruby and the Turquoise camos as well. Those look really cool. A little bit more vibrant than that of what we may be used to in World War II, but I'm totally cool with that. That's my personal preference. You guys could totally differ on it, but it's cool either way. Now, sticking within the Quartermaster before we move over to Major Howard, this is something in which if you go and take a look at the contracts as well, there's a slight adjustment also made to these. So firstly, right off the bat, you'll see that the new weapon contract is that of the GPMG, and that's for going prone and either crouching kills with that. But we also see, if we examine it a little bit further, that we no longer have any XP based contracts. So all of the rewards are either rare or common supply drops and no XP is a reward at all for these. Now, of course, it does help out that the entire bottom row is different bribes from the last Twitch Prime bundle that we ended up seeing that you can earn organically from different uniform bribes and weapon charm bribes. But other than that, once again, we have seen the XP completely replaced with that of just regular and rare supply drops. Now, moving over to Major Howard's though, this is only one thing I really want to talk about. Of course, we are still getting those new weapon updates every single day in that daily order in which you'll end up having different challenges for each day. And as of recording this, we end up having the PO8 epic version of the Abwehr, that being for 10 multi-kills with pistols. But we also have seen a different combination of heroic and weapon variants for the daily orders in the past couple of days and a week and a half or so at this point since they've been implemented. But on top of that, the cool thing to me is that one of the weekly 
monthly challenges this week is for a Blitzkrieg bribe. So that's going to be something that guarantees you a Blitzkrieg item. I don't know if it's going to be more in the sense that all three are items from Blitzkrieg, but that's something that is definitely obtainable and I think you should totally go for it, especially given the fact that we do have these new items on a timed release schedule in the Blitzkrieg category. It'll be nice to take advantage of that while you have the opportunity to. So definitely give that a shot try that one out and hopefully the odds are in your favor. Some of the other things I want to talk about deal a little bit with the game modes within World War II. One of those firstly being HQ 24-7. Last week in the weekly update from Sledgehammer that we got over on their blog, we ended up seeing a little bit of a sequence where we saw a sniper in the headquarters at the top of the score for training, shooting down on somebody in there, really showcasing that we'd end up getting this as a playable map, but we didn't know exactly to what extent. Currently, there is an HQ 24-7 place that allows for free-for-all gun game and prop hunts in headquarters in that map as playable and it's free for everybody so if you don't necessarily have the dlc you're not limited by not playing this you can play it whenever and wherever now at this point in time and it seems like this will probably be like what shipment 1944 has where it'll be going forward continuously there during the lifespan of world war ii so this will be fun to play around with a little bit and i think i've heard it's also in private matches so you can jump in and play that as well but on top of that, we end up seeing Ground War added in finally as well. So it's not something right now that is just a weekly mode or a weekend mode. This is something that is there at the very moment for as long as we can see in the featured playlist. So that's something you definitely want to take a look at. 9v9 action gets really hectic, very crazy. And of course, there's also war with it which honestly, some of the maps, it almost seems a little too hectic at points with 9v9. I know that Breakout gets insane with some of the grenade spam and everything, but that's probably also to be expected on all the other maps. I just very much so noticed it on Breakout as well. But those are two main additions to the game modes that we have, HQ 24-7 and Ground War for both regular standard mosh pits and then War as well. The next thing I want to mention is a little brief, but it's something that is, of course, very interesting. Before this event happened, we saw all sorts of different things that point to not only the weapons that we now got, but we also had something that pointed to what may have been a new division within World War II, that being either the Commando or the Grenadier Division, two of which are in the game files as being future divisions released at some point in time that we don't know of just yet. But with this update, we saw previously hinted at things within the layers of the paint jobs and what you could select in the World War II category. We saw those actually removed. So while we had what was the crest and some different layers that would have made up this once again division patch, it's no longer there. So these now seemingly removed all traces of what we saw previously and what is yet to be released still. Those have been removed. The actual weapons and the weapon challenges, of course, are in the game. But the last thing that we have yet to see from this update that happened with the division overall system, that new division is now entirely removed. So maybe at some point we do get it during this event, but not right now, or maybe it was something pushed off a little bit further. No matter what way you spin it, it's really interesting to me that it's been covered up, but do with that information what you will. Now, switching over into a little bit of a different scenario here, we end up seeing that the Zombies Orders and Contracts are finally live as well. Those have been promised for quite some time. A lot of people thought that we'd end up getting those as soon as DLC 2 dropped because that's what Cameron Dayton ended up saying, but they were delayed a little bit further to which we got them yesterday, and those are now live and updated and will be something that will be, once again, continuously supported throughout the rest of the lifespan of the game, which honestly is fantastic. I think this is definitely something that will help the Zombies community out tremendously because admittedly there's not all that much more attention given to zombies outside of that and therefore it kind of becomes dull in the grand scheme of things multiplayer at least you have that progression you have that constant support and dlc weapons but zombies is not necessarily given that same sort of i don't want to say courtesy but just the attention that multiplayer ends up getting so it's nice that this is going to add a little bit more of a depth to the zombies mode and hopefully that will quench some of the thirst that zombies players have had but if you guys have been looking out for those those once again have been added in as of yesterday. Other things we're gonna mention here at this one, just come down to the more smaller things in this, but that of being double XP locations. We started out as of the update yesterday, having it available both in double division XP overall, but then also double XP in parties when you joined up with some friends. But as of today, once again, Sledgehammer ended up tweeting that there's a little bit of a midweek mobilization going on in the game in which there's double XP on ground war mosh pits, both standard and hardcore, but also double XP on HQ 24 seven playlist 
lists as well. So a different plethora of ways that you can end up getting double XP in World War II. Personally, I'm pretty much primarily a solo player, so I like this little extra addition to the game midweek that we have now. But for those of you guys that end up playing with parties, or if you guys want to take a look at Ground War or HQ 24-7, that is a great way to end up getting standard double XP for your soldier, but also double division XP is live overall. So take advantage of that if you guys have the opportunity to jump on and play a little bit of World War II definitely something worthwhile. After that, we have the addition of Ranked Play Season 3, in which finally, for the first time since the game launched, a lot of people were really wanting this. It's about time, I think, but we end up having the ability to add four-man parties into Ranked Play. Previously, it started out as a sort of trying to find your own individual skill level and trying to more accurately rank players individually. They only had singles available in ranked play then we had the ability to jump in with a duo for doubles in ranked play but there's four people obviously in those game modes but now we can finally jump in with a full four-man squad which may very well change how you experience ranked play overall you might end up running into a lot more coordinated teams obviously but that's something that finally from the beginning we have now at our disposal and the final thing that i want to talk about was one that actually i was kind of surprised to see has already happened but for those of you guys on xbox one and pc it is not going to happen to you guys but for those of you guys on PlayStation 4, you may have noticed that the DLC maps are already in the rotation for standard modes already, not just exclusively in that War Machine playlist that we have overall, but now they bleed over into your standard modes like TDM, War, Domination, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys don't have the DLC, you might run into some situations where it might kick you out or something like that, but these were already thrown into the mix here for all the standard rotations across your standard modes. So that's something to take into consideration when jumping into the game, but that said, as somebody with a DLC, I didn't necessarily mind. But I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up here. Pretty much all the big changes are right here on the table now. There might have been a few things that I've missed here and there, but if that's the case, then feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below. And also, let me know your thoughts on the update in general. Do you guys like what we've seen so far? Do you like the new weapons if you got in your hands on them? Do you like some of the changes that we have in terms of maybe, say, game modes and contracts? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Regarding Call of Duty World War II, we'll be keeping you guys up to date with everything you need to know regarding not only Blitzkrieg updates, but also Call of Duty best class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, all that good stuff. And Black Ops 4 is a big topic of discussion right now, which we'll have a video on that probably tomorrow, discussing a lot of stuff. So if any of it interests you, make sure that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with us out of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram as well, trying to get a little more active over there also so that link is too in the description below but i'll see you guys later thank you guys all so much for watching mazda espresso take care and peace